Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a classic and pretty famous problem, the Sudoku solver. It's listed as hard, but don't let that scare you. We're gonna break down a very human-like way of solving it, step by step. Let's get started. So the goal is pretty straightforward. We're given a 9x9 Sudoku board. Some cells already have numbers, but others are empty, marked with a dot. Our job is to write a program that fills in all the empty cells to create a valid, completed Sudoku puzzle. Okay, let's quickly go over the rules of the game. The first rule is about rows. For every single horizontal row on the board, you must use the numbers 1 through 9, and you can only use each one once, no repeats. The second rule is just like the first, but for columns. In every vertical column from top to bottom, each number from 1 to 9 has to show up exactly one time. Again, no duplicates in any column. And finally, the third rule applies to those smaller 3 by 3 boxes. The board is divided into nine of these little squares. Within each of those squares, you guessed it, the numbers one through nine must each appear exactly once. These three rules are all we need to follow. Here's the example from the problem description. We get the board on the left, with all those dots representing empty spaces. Our program needs to return the exact same board, but filled in correctly, like the one you see on the right. Every row, column, and box is now valid. So how do we even begin to solve this? The most intuitive way is a technique called backtracking. Think of it like solving a maze. You go down one path. If you hit a dead end, you don't give up. You simply go back to the last place you made a choice, and you try a different path. That's exactly what we'll do here. We'll find an empty spot, try putting a number in it, and then see if we can solve the rest of the puzzle from there. Let's formalize that idea. First, we scan the board to find an empty cell. If we can't find any, it means the board is full. And congratulations, we've solved it. But if we do find an empty spot, we'll try to place a 1 there. We check if that's a valid move according to our three rules. If it is, we recursively call our solver to try and finish the puzzle. If that path eventually hits a dead end, our function will tell us it failed. So we come back to this spot, erase the 1 and try a 2. Cast ties, cast times sum. We keep doing this until one of the numbers leads to a full solution. Before we write the main solver, we need a helper. A function that can answer one simple question. If I put this number, right here, is it a legal move? This function will need to check the number against the current row, the current column, and the current 3x3 box. If the number doesn't appear in any of them, the move is valid. Here's what that helper function looks like. First, a simple loop checks all cells in the current row. Then, another loop checks the current column. The trickiest part is the 3x3 box. We can find the top left corner of any box with some simple integer division. Once we have that starting corner, we just loop through the 3x3 grid from there. If we find our number anywhere, we immediately return false. If we get through all three checks, the move is good, and we return true. Now for the main recursive solver. It scans the board to find the first empty cell, which is marked with a dot. Once it finds one, it tries placing every number from 1 to 9. For each number, it first calls our is valid helper. If the move is valid, it places the number. And then, this is the magic part. It calls itself to solve the rest of the board. If that recursive call eventually returns true, great, we've found the solution. But if it returns false, that means our choice was a dead end. So we backtrack. We reset the cell back to a dot and try the next number in our loop. Here is all the code put together inside the solution class that LeetCode expects. The main solve Sudoku function just kicks off our recursive solve helper. And that's really all there is to it. The logic fits together quite cleanly. The version of is valid here is just a slightly more compact way of writing the same checks we just discussed. So what's the performance like? The time complexity is tricky. In the absolute worst case scenario, for each empty cell, we might have to try all nine numbers. So if there are m empty cells, the complexity is roughly nine to the power of m. This looks scary. But in practice, our is valid check prunes the search tree so much that it's actually very fast for typical Sudoku puzzles. The space complexity comes from the recursion. Our chain of function calls can be at most m calls deep, so the space is order m. So to wrap things up, the key takeaway here is the backtracking pattern. It's an incredibly useful technique for problems where you need to find a valid configuration under a set of rules, like puzzles, permutations, or combinations. The strategy is always the same. Make a choice, recursively explore the consequences, and if it doesn't work out, undo your choice and try again. Breaking it down with a helper function to check the rules makes the main logic much easier to follow. And that's the Sudoku solver. 
I hope this breakdown made the backtracking approach clear and intuitive. If this was helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more problem explanations. If you have any questions, just drop a comment below. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can always support the channel through the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next one.